tools to use at an event in the desert called Burning Man. Um, if you want to see where psychedelics are being used today, the most visible place is Burning Man, where 50,000 people get together, and there's an enormous amount of cheerful, open drug taking. So much of Burning Man is about creativity. It's about thinking outside the box. It is about coming up with novel approaches, beginner's mind. And I find that psychedelics helps me with exactly that. There may be another reason why users like Tea Fairy and Burning Dan feel that they're seeing the world for the first time. It stems from a group of cells in the brain called the locus ceruleus. Nichols calls it the novelty detector. Normally, what happens is if we see something in the environment that's novel, it starts burst firing very quickly. The cells fire very quickly. So if we're sitting in a quiet room like this and someone drops a glass bottle across the room, we all immediately hear it because the locusts really start firing and drew our attention to it. Well, psychedelics amplify the burst firing in novelty. Can this novelty effect of psychedelics be used to help those in desperate situations clean the slate and see life anew? Does it sound okay? Yep. Okay, great. So just lie down, and just relax, and just go into the experience. Annie Levy knows she's going to die in less than a year. She has stage four ovarian cancer. All I could think of was, I'm going to die really soon, and it's going to be horrible, excruciating death. I'm going to be in horrible pain. I just had these thoughts going over and over again, and they wouldn't stop. Annie is scared about dying. She also worries about those she loves. Well, I have a granddaughter who, whose name is Oleana. We call her Oli. I feel like I'm an important part of her life and she's certainly an important part of my life and I really feel badly about and about dying on her I mean that's a hard thing it broke my heart to think of how it was gonna break hers Annie is one of 12 patients with advanced cancer enrolled in this end-of-life study at Harbor UCLA Medical Center here we have the medicine. Okay. Okay. Using a moderate dose of psilocybin, psychiatrist Charles Grobe and his colleague Alicia Danforth shepherd each patient through a psychedelic experience they hope will calm their fear and anxiety. When individuals develop a terminal illness, they're often overwhelmed with anxiety. They often have to take uh, large quantities of pain-suppressing medication, constricts their capacity to appreciate life, and it constricts their sense of who they are, their sense of who they always thought they were, and their sense of purpose, their sense of meaning. This is not about taking psilocybin or other compounds multiple times. It's about orchestrating, if you can, uh, a single profound transformative experience that uh, then results in an unfolding of behavioral change over time. And this here is Tukunima Galtzen, who I met in Tibet. It takes less than an hour for the world to begin to look different to Annie. The drug started to work. It felt like the bed wasn't a bed anymore. It was a circle of hands, and they were all holding me up and supporting me. Do you need anything? Um, OK. OK, just to know you're here. And I felt like I had always been supported that way, and I always would be supported that way. It was my faith coming back to me, my faith, the faith that there's something out there. Franz Vollenweider's lab in Zurich is investigating this spiritual reaction 
that is so common with psychedelic use. These drugs activate the frontal area of the brain responsible for sense of self, while the amygdala, critical in the processing of fear and anxiety, also experience mostly heightened feelings. There's no thinking about the person, there's no observer. You just are. It's, it's like trying to describe colors to a blind person. It, it changes the way you think. Of the 12 participants in this psilocybin study, only two survive. Annie passed away during the making. They'd said what they'd needed to say. They'd forgiven people. They'd mended relationships. They can experience a, a sense of close proximity to, to God, to the divine, and they, they report that they are infused with light. The man who created this molecule, Albert Hoffman, warned, if used improperly, LSD could hurt you, disturb you, make you crazy. But Hoffman also said that LSD is a tool to turn us into what we're supposed to be. There's this class of compounds, the psychedelics, uh, that has remained untouched that you know we're pulling them out of the deep freeze for 30 years 40 years we have not looked at them clinically and it's just incredibly exciting and compelling to do so we're on the threshold of learning so much more as well these compounds are extraordinary probes and if we are allowed to explore them to the to, under approved safe conditions I believe the potential is astounding. The only difference between a drug and a poison is the dose. There, you can't tell me that of all the drugs out there, I mean even heroin is used to treat pain in other countries. You can't tell me that psychedelics don't have a medical use. They do. We just have to discover it. How psychedelics evolve from this point as agents of healing or misuse is yet to be seen.